So why bother just replacing something when you can upgrade? Trailblazer SS intake going on my Tahoe. Now the fail part in question isn't actually the intake manifold, but the part that connects to the intake manifold, the throttle body. Now, I don't know if this actually failed. I mean, this one hasn't failed. This is, I mean, it might be failed. It's from a junkyard, but the, the one that's on Tahiti, I think is starting to fail, which is why I'm here swapping the intake manifold and swapping the throttle body. And let me pull her in and start taking her apart and I'll kind of explain myself a little better. All right, so while I uh, start dismantling Tahiti here, allow me to explain myself. So last time you've seen Tahiti here on the channel, I had the motor out, I did heads cam, resealed her, tuned her, and she's been running great up until this point. I have about 2,500 miles total on the setup. Now recently what's been happening is when you come to a light, just as of like a few days ago, the idle would kind of surge between 500 and 800 RPM. If you give it some gas, it'll even out and it'll be fine. And then a few days after that started happening, uh, coming off a stoplight, she just completely shut down. Now, luckily I had my laptop on me, so I hooked that up, I scanned for codes, and I actually had a code for the throttle body, uh, P2135 for throttle body correlation. And after clearing those codes, believe it or not, it started back up. Three, four days later, I've still been driving her every day. She's still working fine. So my theory is, I think there's a problem with the throttle body. I mean, this thing as of today has 253,000 miles on it. And um, basically what I think is happening is the throttle body is just worn out because when it throws that code, um, 2135, it means that the TPS sensor and the throttle body and the gas pedal, being a drive by wire, they're not getting along. There's a difference there. Um, whether it's a problem with the wiring, there's like a short, whether this is just worn out because there's a bunch of plastic gears in here, whether there's a problem with the gas pedal sensor, who knows? But uh, I'm basically just firing off the parts can in here. I'm gonna swap out the throttle body. However, as you can see, that intake manifold does not match that throttle body. And yes, I can go out and get an adapter for this. However, why bother when I wanted to do this upgrade anyway? So yeah, right here I have an intake manifold from a Trailblazer SS. I bought this off of Amazon, it's genuine GM. It cost me 160 bucks after shipping. And as you can see, the throttle body that I have will bolt up to that. Now this throttle body was left over from my Camaro uh, LY6. It's the stock 6.0 throttle body. I have a Nick Williams on that car, so I never use it. It just sat around doing nothing. So now since this problem arose, I figured what better time to do my, throttle, my intake manifold swap being I have the throttle body anyway. And there is potentially a problem with the existing throttle body on Tahiti. What we're gonna do is go out and put everything back together and do a zero to 50. No, I already filmed it. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna do a quick zero to 50 on Tahiti. We're gonna see what she does before putting this intake manifold on. Then we're gonna finish the install. I'm gonna to touch up the tune. We're gonna go back out, same spot, same zero to 50, and we're gonna see if she picked anything up. The fun part is I haven't actually done a zero to 50 or a zero to 60 on this thing since the heads and cam setup. So right now we're actually gonna see what she picked up since we did that stock run back when I did the e-fan video. All right guys, so I'm ready to do the first zero to 50 run. I'm in the exact same spot where I did it last time when I did the e-fan conversion. So I could compare this number to that number and see how much it picked up after the heads and cam in tune compared to back then when it was just stock with the e-fans. Um, once we installed the throttle body and the Trailblazer SS intake, we'll come back to the same exact spot. We'll hit it again, uh, see if it picks up anything. I don't know if it's gonna be measurable, but it'll be fun to see if it does actually pick up anything just from doing the intake swap. Why do I have like no service? Okay, it looks like we're ready to go. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and floor it because this thing has no converter. It's not gonna spin the tires. Uh, and here we go.
All right, well, the drag, he took a dive on the uh, the one to two shift. Well, we got 6.64 seconds. I'm gonna go hit it again. I'm gonna reset and let's hit it again. I'm gonna kind of power break it a little bit now, bring the RPM up, see if that does anything. Doubt it, but let's see. Six, four, six, little, little tiny bit faster. All right, so the power braking did seem to work a tiny bit, so let's try it again. Let's reset the draggy. Ooh, that was the best one yet. We got 6.15 to 50. So yeah, that's about a second and a half faster from when it was totally stocked with the E-Fans. And uh, let's get this all installed and we'll see how much more she'll pick up. If it's even gonna be measurable. I mean, when I did the fan clutch swap to E-Fans, um, it was measurable on that zero to 50. So I'm assuming, you know, once it's all said and done and the tune is touched up, we will probably see some kind of gains. Um, the thing that's really gonna hold me back is the fact that this thing still has the completely stock exhaust and cats. We're gonna get to that eventually in a future video. Believe me, that's gonna get upgraded. Um, but right now, being I have this throttle body problem, I'm just kind of focusing on the intake stuff once again and actually getting more air in, but not necessarily trying to get much more out. I mean, I think we're basically there. All it is is uh, unplugging the injectors and zipping all the, the manifold bolts out. Here we go. All right, so side by side, I'm already seeing some problems, some minor stuff I didn't really take into account. The map sensor on this intake, it's back here. On the SS, it's in the front. So I already pulled the map sensor out. That's a direct fit. That's not really a problem. I am probably gonna have to extend those wires though. Um, the bigger thing is the EVAP uh, valve. On the old intake, it's right at the front here. The new one, the port is here, but the valve itself kind of mounts to the side by the fuel rail. And I already know it's not gonna mount to this fuel rail. I could probably zip tie it up. However, I do need to get an entirely different valve and like a hose that goes off of here. So whatever, I'll figure that out. Cap this off in the meantime. Hopefully I have it by the end of the video. But other than that, it seems to be the same. So I'm gonna pull the fuel rail, see if I get that swapped all over. Hopefully everything lines up bolt wise. And then, um, yeah, I guess we'll pop the throttle body on, get it on the truck, and then deal with the map sensor and purge valve stuff after. I guess this is uh, it's gonna cost me a little more than I thought. It does not appear that the uh, the Tahoe's fuel rail is gonna fit this thing. I just kind of figured it's a truck intake, so you'd think the truck fuel rail would just swap right over, but that's pretty much seated. And look at that gap. This side, I can't even get it to drop down because the intake bulges out right where the bracket uh, needs to go down. So I'm gonna go regroup, kind of figure out what else I need to make this work. And um, yeah, I'll be back in a sec. All right, well, it is the next day and I have somewhat underestimated the amount of modification that needs to be done to get this intake on the Tahoe. I pretty much thought it was just gonna be a plug and play bolt-in kind of deal. And for the most part of it is, like the intake itself does bolt to the motor without a problem. It is a cathedral port intake. The Tahoe does have cathedral port heads. However, everything else seems to be a bit of a problem. So first of all, the fuel rail from Tahiti's um, stock engine does not work on this intake. Um, after having them side by side, this one is much larger and wider. And after trying to wrestle with the fuel rail, there's no way it's going to uh, fit. Even once I got it down over the intake, the holes don't line up. It's all like kind of twisted and there's tension on it. It doesn't work. Now, after looking on semi racing, I found that I could get the appropriate uh, fuel rail for this intake for about 200 bucks. 
Amazon had it for about 150, 160, but shipping was gonna take longer. At that point, I remembered where I got the throttle body from. Now this is the six liter LY6 intake that came off my Camaro's uh, 6.0 because that car has a supercharger on it. This is the intake that came on from the junkyard. This is where the throttle body came from. So I remembered I still had this in storage. It has the correct uh, newer style Gen 4 fuel rail that will fit this intake. It also has the hose on it for the EVAP that's different as well as the updated EVAP solenoid that bolts to the side of the fuel rail. So I have all the stuff I need to convert that over without an issue. It also has a map sensor in here. However, it is, I believe this is a, a, a two bar or one and a half bar. So it isn't going to be like a direct plug and play into Tahiti. However, I could just reuse the map sensor off her intake. So that's not a big deal. The real kicker, well, first of all, if you look at this, the, uh, the 6.0 intake, it's actually larger than the Trailblazer SS, which I thought was funny. The reason why I'm not using this over that is because this is a, a square port intake, uh, which isn't gonna fit Tahiti's heads where this is a cathedral port. So that's why, yeah, I am. Otherwise I would have just probably threw this on there and you know, called it a day because that will allow me to put a larger, more like modern throttle body on it compared to the stock one that's on Tahiti. But anyway, yeah, uh, the last pretty much big problem is the throttle body. So the one that's on Tahiti is an eight pin. The new one that I want to put on, which is the whole reason I'm here, is a six pin. Now there's no way you can actually adapt this because apparently the way the throttle bodies communicate, Tahiti uses a attack module, whereas this just goes directly to the PCM, if I'm understanding that correctly. So there's no way you can actually adapt it by just switching wires around. So what I had to do was uh, go online, did a little bit of research and 300, and $3 later, 303. Now granted, I paid for overnight shipping. If you don't pay for overnight shipping, $275 later, I have what I need to make that throttle body work on Tahiti. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's probably some kind of adapter or some kind of PCM or like a, a whole different throttle body. Nope, this. This little cable costs $275, and apparently it's the only way you can get this throttle body to work on an older style truck. Um, granted, I could just go and put this intake on Tahiti and get the adapter plate that goes onto here and put Tahiti's old throttle body on that. However, that's gonna screw me in two ways. First of all, the only reason I'm here is to swap the throttle body. Well, one of the main reasons I'm here is to swap the throttle body because the one in Tahiti is most likely faulty or starting to go out. So putting the old one back on isn't gonna do anything and buying another stock replacement is pointless because the whole reason I'm doing this is because I have this one on hand. The second thing is putting Tahiti's throttle body on this intake is just gonna choke it down and it's gonna inhibit or at least reduce any performance gains, which I'm also after, which is like one of the main reasons why I'm doing this. So uh, I mean, apparently this $275 wire, it has like a, something, some kind of magic going on in here where it's going to allow the new throttle body to work with Tahiti. You can see it's an excellent cable. And no matter where I find, it's even like more absurdly expensive on uh, eBay. It's going for like over 300 without shipping on there for some reason, it's the exact same cable. I got this through LSX acceleration. But yeah, pretty much the Tahiti's eight pin harness plugs into this. The six pin plugs into that. And apparently this is adapts it to work with the throttle bot with the uh, the stock wiring and computers on the truck. The other thing that needed to be done, which I didn't account for because um, this fuel rail, if you take a look there, it only has an inlet. There's no return. Tahiti's fuel system has a return. So this isn't gonna work in stock form. So in the other box, This was a hundred and a hundred and fifty, a hundred and forty dollars later with overnight shipping. I have all the fittings that I need, as well as a Corvette fuel filter, 
where this is gonna get mounted onto the rail. That's gonna give me a place to run my return. I'll run one end into the rail, one end from the feed from the truck, and then the other end's gonna go to the return back to the tank. And that should be the final thing that I need to get this whole uh, setup to work. This is like, what am I in? I'm in like $500 over just, was that with the intake? No, yeah, without the intake, I'm, the thing's like an extra $500 I've just spent overnight trying to get this whole setup to work. All right, so I got all the injectors uh, swapped out. I'm just gonna give these a little hit with a bit of silicone spray on the O-rings. So hopefully they just drop right in without a problem. Wow, well that fits a whole lot better. Well, look at that, right on in. Why is it, oh, they're 180 out. What do they do? So, <sighs> this fuel rail is not correct either because the truck it came out of, out off of the, the mounting points are on the outside here. So this, even though it actually fits over the intake, I can't actually, like that's in, everything fits great. I just can't bolt it down because the, the mounting points are 180 out. All right, so just the next day, once again, I'm trying to get this intake fitted to my Tahoe. Now, I figured everything out for the most part. We're finally ready to bolt it in. Let me just show you what I kind of managed to accomplish off camera. So yeah, the uh, mounting points were 180 out on the Trailblazer SS intake compared to the fuel rail. Now this rail I got off of the LY6 intake where I got the throttle body from. As you can see, the standoffs here, they're on the outside, we're on the uh, Trailblazer intake they're on the inside here. So pretty much all I did was take some aluminum stripping. I just made some extensions for those brackets. They just come straight out and then I just shimmed them with some washers to make sure everything's even and the injectors are seated correctly. Um, I did have to grind down the standoffs on the intake just a little bit to get this to actually clear under the rail. Um, but that done at all four corners, this thing is like totally ready. It doesn't like look bad either. Um, I was afraid it was gonna look a little hacky, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. And the rail fits. I saved myself like 200 bucks of having to go and order like the appropriate rail to make this work. Now the filter I mounted in this uh, hole here with a nut and bolt that was in the fuel rail already for the bracket where the line comes out. And that actually fits there really, really nicely. My main feed from the fuel pump is gonna connect onto here. Uh, the return, it's gonna clip right onto there, the existing lines on the truck. Now we just need to make a connection from here to the rail itself. And ideally what I was going to do, well, what I still am gonna do, is make a connection like that. So that'll come right out of the filter, go right to this hose, that'll loop in, and that's nice and clean, it's nice and compact, and I really like the way that looks. Unfortunately, I did not order the correct fitting to slip into this, and I do need this truck for the weekend because I'm actually uh, taking it on a little trip where I'm gonna be able to get a lot of the tuning done. So yeah, I need this thing running um, by today. And the part that I ordered isn't coming till like later tonight. So I went to the auto parts store, I picked up this 3 8 uh, quick connect, I'm gonna clip that into there, bend this a loop, flare the end of it a little bit, and then just hose clamp some um, 3 8 fuel injection hose onto the rail, onto that part, should be done. Got the EVAP hose, uh, the EVAP solenoid mounted up, got the hose connected, throttle body on, put my Tahoe's map sensor in here, so that's ready to go. My Tahoe has um, Hydro Boost for the uh, brake booster, so I don't have a nipple back here, I still got the plug in there. Um, for that, and lastly, the hose for the actual EVAP line. I cut the quick connect end off that used to go to the old valve on top. I heated this up, and now it's at the point where it very, very snugly slides over that, and I could just put a little clamp on it. This is EVAP, so it's not like it's under like a huge amount of pressure, and that fits on there nice and tight. So I think that's gonna look really clean, and the other end will just clip to the truck how it was. But uh, I'm gonna finish up the fuel line here, and then we'll go get this thing installed, finally. Fortunately, this isn't gonna loop exactly how I need it to, but I should be able to at least get it so it goes where I need it to. 
I can't just do a straight, um, oh man, how do I get this out of here? Be nice if I could just do a straight U with it, but I can't with that tool, but yeah, that'll work. Actually, I might not even cut it. I might just go right onto the end of that flare. It's gotta come up just a little bit though. Yeah, that'll work just fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna even bother cutting that down. All right, let's see if I get this in the actual uh, filter because it is a very tight fit. I'm actually gonna put some grease on this. Yes. All right, we're in. I gotta get a piece of hose that doesn't have a huge cut in it. Oh, you know what I gotta do? I gotta pull the... <clears throat> this hose is going, the steam vent tube, because the new throttle body doesn't actually have one that goes through it. I'm just gonna take the coolant hose here, the crossover tube hose. I think this is long enough where I could just... Yeah, I'm just gonna connect that to there because it doesn't have to go to the throttle body anymore. All right, that'll work. I'll just have to pin it up somewhere. All right, so all the bolts are in. Last thing I need to do is kind of fab and intake up. Um, I need to run this PCV line to the intake and then I need to connect my $300 stupid wire here. Uh, unfortunately, the engine cover is not gonna fit back on the way where the map sensor is. Um, I can't get that bracket to go back down over that either. That holds the engine cover on, so I don't think that's gonna fit. Later on in the video, um, we'll try to maybe modify something to get it to work to get that cover back on. Um, this too, I had to kind of cut and trim around here to get the harness to secure back down. I'm probably gonna end up putting a spacer in there just to kind of make it not look as wonky when I try to get the cover on. But right now everything's secure. Um, let's plug this in and just kind of purge. Actually, yeah, before we even make the intake, I think we could start it up and just make sure there are no fuel leaks. So here's the six pin on the newer throttle body. And then our eight pin from Tahiti, and that's it. All right, well, I lost my mic, so I use my phone. I don't have a tripod, but let me just go, go key on with this, and we'll see if we have any leaks. <sighs> Seems all right. I don't see anything. I mean, I guess the adapter's working. Well, let's, let's see if the gas pedal actually works. All right, next up, I got to fab some kind of an intake. And then I got to connect the the breather here to that tube because this uh, this intake doesn't have a port for that. But other than that, she seems good. She's not even running that bad. I mean, I'm still gonna have to retune it, but um, yeah, she's running good. All right, so it's been a few days since I installed the intake. Now the last piece of footage that I took was what you guys just saw me starting it up, verifying there were no leaks and that the thing actually does run. Now since then I did go ahead and kind of scramble to finish everything else up. I just threw an air filter on it because I was taking the thing out for a road trip over the weekend and I, I had to get it done because I did use that time to get the tune dialed in. So a four hour round trip with the laptop hooked up, uh, you could bet your ass the fueling on that thing is perfect. And I did go ahead and put the exact same amount of timing that the truck had in it before, before putting the intake when we did the zero to 50 run uh, before any changes. So timing's identical, that's not gonna affect anything. And the fueling is dead on where it's supposed to be. In fact, the whole tune was like 10, 12% rich. So that's all fixed and we are ready to actually go out and romp on this thing. Now, before we do that, I do need to finish the air intake tube and filter itself because unfortunately due to the angle of the new intake and throttle body, it kind of angles up so the factory air tube does not fit, it hits the hood. And I did kind of half-ass when I tuned the thing, put just a little pieces of tube on there with a open element filter under there, just have something on that. 
And that just gave me like absolutely terrible intake temps and traffic. I was hitting like 165 degrees. Moving, it wasn't bad. It was like around 100 when ambient was like 70. Um, but yeah, traffic, it was just terrible. And with the factory intake, it did not get that high whatsoever. So we're gonna right now work on getting the intake finished and then we're gonna go take it out, do the zero to 50 run and see if we picked anything measurable up. So now I was really trying to keep the factory air box, even though you might think it's a restriction, it actually flows pretty well. I mean, it's like a three or four inch tube from the factory. Like it matched the new throttle body pretty much perfectly. It slipped right on there and there didn't seem to be too much of a restriction. The only thing was, like I said, due to this angle, um, it was hitting the hood. So there's no way I can use it with this setup without having to hack it up or kind of modify something. Um, and I do have a K&N drop-in filter in here. So that's also why I really didn't have a problem with using this. Plus the fact that it sucks cool air straight from inside the fender. So it's already its own kind of cold air intake. So if you're ditching that factory air box, scrounging through storage for random miscellaneous four inch intake pieces, this is version two of what I came up with. So the first version kind of went over the radiator hose, went up and then it came down, but unfortunately that was kind of rubbing against the hood. So this version, not only does it go under the hose and it kind of fits a little bit better, but it also is a true cold air intake. So what you're looking at right now is pretty much, um, what Kane and I guess would sell you. I mean, somewhat, there's just like a molded pipe that kind of curves real nice, puts the filter over here and then has a bit of a guard just to sort of kind of shield it from the hot engine air. So I pretty much just mimicked that and just like any other generic intake, just ran the air filter over to the factory location. But in addition to that, what you're not gonna get for the $300 you buy if you get an aftermarket one from K&N, I fab this up out of some just very thin, sheet metal, like duct, duct work material. And I even made a lid. So now that is gonna seal the intake up, completely shield it away from the engine bay. And if you look, that is going to force it to suck air through the factory location fresh air from in the fender as well as behind the headlight. So that is completely sealed up from the engine bay. I am gonna insulate this in a minute, kind of plug it up around here, make sure it can only pull air from the fresh air locations. And I mean, I didn't buy anything. I had the metal, had the filter, had all these pieces, and I even have the heat insulation stuff. So this intake essentially cost me nothing. And just testing with it, my intake temps went from 165 degrees in traffic um, with this setup here without the box down to 113. A couple of other things I had to do, I installed a port here to connect the vent line for the crankcase on the passenger side. And then I did go ahead and convert over to just a two wire air intake temperature sensor. So uh, this connects to the black wire and I think the tan wire on the mass airflow uh, connector. Snipped that off, I kind of tied up the other wires in the harness. <clears throat> and then I installed the sensor. You probably can't see it, it's under here screwed into the intake. And being this car is tuned as um, uh, speed density, the mass airflow isn't getting used anymore anyway, so that's why I converted the sensor over. But let's go ahead, get this finished up. I'm gonna kind of clean the airbox up, insulate it real good, and then we'll go out and we'll see if it picked up any time in the zero to 50. So I have a bunch of this crap left over from the Trans Am's firewall. You can see it's like a thick kind of insulation heat barrier. So I think that's gonna work great in there. Oh yeah, look at that, that seals up real nice. Sealed up all the way down by the tray, sealed up back here, sealed up down there. Oh yeah, for the two mountain points too, I used the um, the existing clips for this, uh, this like barrier here. And I just drilled the holes exactly where these clip in. So this just holds that in place there. 
uh, the top of it will be held together once the lid is on. And um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna put a little foam down here. Some of that strip foam. And then I'm gonna kind of build up around here a little bit just to seal up where the tube goes through. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have just cut a smaller hole out of this stuff. Uh, hold on, I can fix it. So we'll just throw this guy on top of this. Yeah, so that's a lot better. I mean, if I cared enough, and if I had any metal left over, I can make one more of these where this hole is smaller. Uh, but the way it is now, it's gonna work. It's all sealed up. Nice, nice seal at the bottom. So nothing's gonna be pulling air. Um, air is not gonna get into the, this box from anywhere except for the fender and by the headlight, which is what I want. The lid. Fits on there real nice. And uh, yeah, as far as the finish, I have decided not to paint it. I think what I'm gonna do is pick up some, uh, maybe some like matte black vinyl wrap and just wrap it. Cause especially with this tape on here, this isn't gonna take paint anyway. And um, yeah, I, I'm really happy with the way this came out. I can't wait to, uh, to log it with the actual insulation with everything sealed up now. Cause it was doing really good without this stuff. I could probably put like one screw in there if I want. You can sort of see the dilemma here. Because of the way the intake, it's like cast differently and everything. And it, the, the harness, it just does not fit. Like down in these grooves, um, like it did on the old intake. And because of that, the piece that holds the lid on or the cover you can't actually bolt it down so i think what i'm going to do is just cut this so i can space out and reconnect uh, just this back part that has the two little hinges in it and then that'll allow me to at least like hook this into there and then the front part for the mounting bolt it's supposed to be exactly where the mass airflow now is not the mass airflow, the map sensor. So I'm gonna see if maybe I could use a piece of aluminum and just kind of bend something up from this hole down here. Just put a bolt in here, bend something up, use a shorter bolt, and then I could just screw that in directly above it. It's probably gonna sit a little bit higher, but I mean, you know, we'll still be on there. Shouldn't look too bad. All right, so check it out. I cut down the plastic piece, put some washers under it, got it bolted back down, made this little bracket, put a uh, thread insert in there. That's an M6 thread, so it actually is the same as the original bolt that's in there. That kind of drops down on there. Tighten that down. Look at that. Got our factory engine cover back. We have our HVAC cold air intake box. Let's go take this thing for a drive. Now I'm gonna link everything I use down below like I usually do. So the Amazon Trailblazer SS intake as well as the link to intakehoses.com. Remember all the stuff that I used was uh, four inch. So four inch couplers for the intake tubing, uh, four inch air filter, uh, four inch carbon fiber tubing, but you can use like metal or plastic or something too. I just had that stuff left over from my Camaro's build. And uh, yeah, we're about to just go see if any of that was worthwhile. Now, regardless, this is gonna be a good supporting mod, being my plan is to boost this thing. I mean, it does already have a turbo cam, it has, you know, ported heads. So the intake and then eventually the exhaust to complement the intake and really open the motor up. But just from putting around with this thing, I haven't really noticed any changes, uh, like butt dyno kind of thing. So I don't know.
we'll see if we picked anything up. The nice thing is, even though I'm doing this like a week or like a week and a half apart from when I did the first zero to 50 test, the, uh, the ambient temperature is very close. It's a 67 right now. When I think when I tested it last time, it was like 65. Cold air intake is doing phenomenal. We're at 73 for the intake air temp, 67 outside. It's not even climbing, just sitting at 73 at this light. And then once you start moving, it drops even more. Like I've seen it as low as only two degrees higher than the ambient temperature today. So this friggin' intake seems to be like a hit out of the park. So I'm gonna do the same thing as last time, just uh, kind of power break it, load up the converter a little bit. It seemed to help the time before. Foot to the floor. All right, well, I mean, it's not any worse. We did a 6.15 last time to 50. Uh, this time it was a 6.11. Um, let's give it another one. Second attempt. Six point zero seven. So slightly better. I mean, it's not doing any worse, so. We definitely didn't hurt anything. You know, I'm gonna pull over. I'm gonna try giving this thing like one degree, maybe two degrees of timing. Cause I'm just curious to see if it's gonna help the number or hurt the number. And then that's also gonna tell me if I'm at a good spot with where my timing is, whether or not, um, you know, it can actually take more or adding more is actually gonna hurt it and kill power. Air fuel is like dead perfect though, so. That's nice. Uh, yeah, let's go in here. Let's give it like an extra, give it an extra degree up top because we're already at like 28 right now. And if we pick up knock and she doesn't like it, I will remove that one degree. But let's just see, save that. Got to send it over. All right, data log's going, extra degree of timing. Let's give it a try. In position, reset on the draggy, power break it. What do we got? 5.94. Hmm. No knock. One more degree of timing, perhaps? Plus one. Write it over. Six point zero seven. So I think that extra degree is pretty much where we want to be. I'm going to back it off just one. We still got no knock, but you know, the fact that I, I did two runs, they were pretty much identical. And then I gave it one degree and went down to 594, just pretty significant from what, like six, we were at 607 now. Yeah, so I'm going to just pull that one degree back out. All right, so is the Trailblazer SS intake worth the modification, worth the effort, and worth the time to install and make work? Now, in my opinion, well, probably factually, if you have a stock truck, absolutely not. It's not worth going out, doing all this work. If you're just gonna have a stock truck, stock exhaust, stock heads, cam, you're not doing any more mods to it. Now, if you're like me, you have heads, you have cam, you're planning on doing exhaust later, hell, you're planning on boosting the thing or doing anything to it, then yeah, it's definitely a great supporting mod. And even though we haven't, we didn't really see any huge gains on my highly scientific zero to 50 um, dyno test. Once this thing is boosted and I finally crack open the exhaust, because once again, remember, this thing still has the completely just manifold to tailpipe stock exhaust system. I think that's when we're really gonna reap the benefits of this thing and we're gonna see this thing pick up some more power. Now, with that being said, I think the true, um, the mod of the day here that I highly recommend anybody doing is this intake. I was not expecting to see um, the air intake temperature drops that I did just with this kind of janky piece together intake that I made with just pieces I had laying around. Even these, these carbon fiber pieces, I didn't have to cut them. They were just pre-cut from my Camaro, the tube, every single clamp. Uh, the only thing I really had to go out and buy was this little adapter to fit the, the PCV uh, tube onto here. I had the metal, I had all the gasket material. Oh, I also went out and I bought the self-tapping screws. Everything else was on hand and this thing is going to outperform any friggin' intake. Well, the more expensive stuff, I'm sure it's probably going to match the performance, but as far as 
price goes and for how it performs, you can't beat it versus any other intake that you could buy out there. Yeah, K&Ns look nice. I'm by no means bashing K&N. Hell, I have a K&N filter in here, but for the price they charge, $300 just for a tube with a filter and a little janky piece of sheet metal to sort of shield it off from the engine bay, in my opinion, it's not worth it over the stock intake because the stock one with just a K&N drop-in filter, I feel like it's gonna outperform it because it's still gonna be sucking air directly from inside the fender, but yeah. Super happy with this intake. And as a matter of fact, driving home from work last night, just data logging, the air intake temperature was at 57 degrees while the ambient temperature was at 58. So this thing was actually pulling in cooler air than ambient. And you're probably wondering how the hell is that possible? The uh, sensor for the mirror temperature gauge, it's in the grill by the radiator. So obviously it's gonna be a little bit warmer up there. Uh, but yeah, this thing was actually pulling a lower temperature than the mirror was reading, which I have never had happen on this truck. Um, ever, even with the stock intake setup. I'm gonna put links down below for all the tubing that I use here in case you wanna fab your own intake. I'm gonna try to do it as cheap as possible. I think we could probably get this whole intake fabbed um, with the elbows and anything for under 150 bucks. Probably half the price of a K&N. I'm sure gonna try to do it. I am gonna link that stuff down below. And just keep in mind, if you do wanna fab one of these up yourself, you're gonna have to keep in mind, if you have a clutch fan, you're gonna have to get a tighter elbow here. You're probably gonna have to go up over the hose and kind of route it a different way. But at the, at the end of the day, you still can fab the same box. Just use some tin snips. This is very thin metal. You really don't need any special tools and you can make one hell of an intake. Now, if you do wanna see me go further on this, maybe crack open the exhaust on Tahiti, high flow cat, straight through muffler, definitely leave a like, leave a comment and maybe we'll tackle that in the next video.